Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Uh, friends, today I'm going to talk about uh, Renicel from uh, Editas, and that is a treatment for sickle cell disease. And you may wonder, Raj, already Castevi is out there and already we've got Life Genia. Uh, but I'm talking about uh, Renicel because it's a, in my opinion, it's a superior technology. And also uh, in the latest earnings release, they said that FDA has allowed them to consider Ruby uh, trials as phase one slash two slash three, which means potentially they could uh, register by the end of this year, in my opinion. So with that in mind, let's do a critical comparison between CASJV, Lifegenia, and uh, Renicel. Let's get started. Hey all, this is Raj here. Thanks for supporting the channel so far by becoming subscribers and viewers of our videos. If you're not yet subscribed, press the subscribe button now. This is the right time. And to help me grow further with this channel, I would request that you consider becoming a member. And in order to make it easy for you, I'm introducing a new membership level at just 10 cent per day or $2.99 for the month. It's just like giving me a cup of coffee once in a while. Wouldn't you like to do that? Please check out our membership section and become a member today. It will really help me progress this channel further and give me a sense of accomplishment. Look forward to see you at the membership section. I'll catch up with you again. Welcome back, friends. Uh, is Renicel a promising contender in the race for sickle cell disease cure despite being late to the party? That's the question I was trying to answer. Well, the landscape of sickle cell disease treatment is rapidly evolving with the emergence of gene therapies, while CRISPR therapeutics, CASJV, and Bluebird Bios Lifegenia have garnered uh, recent attention with FDA approval. Eritas Medicine's Renicel, though still under investigation, presents a compelling case for future dominance. With the FDA decision to allow Ruby trial to be considered phase 1 slash 2 slash 3 and potential BLS or a biologics license submission uh, this year, with data released somewhere in the middle of uh, this year, it's now time to take a closer look. Here's a breakdown of why Renicel might be a strong contender despite being late to the party. First, let us compare the gene editing targets and tools. When we look at the gene editing targets and tools, Lifegenia takes a direct approach by adding a functional copy of a healthy uh, beta globin gene or HBB to hematopoietic stem cells or HSCs. This aims to directly address the root cause of SCD, the production of abnormal hemoglobin, that is HBS. CASJV utilizes CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing to target the BCL11A gene, a regulator that uh, normally suppresses fetal hemoglobin or HBF production after birth. I mean, somewhere around nine months to 12 months after birth, a fetal hemoglobin is suppressed. Editing BCL11A aims to increase HBF production, which can alleviate SCD symptoms. Renicel edits the promoters of the gamma globin gene HBG1 and HBG2. These promoters naturally regulate HBF production by creating precise cuts near these promoters. With AS-Cas12A, Renicel aims to mimic beneficial mutations that encourage adult cells to produce more HBF. And it has a potential superiority in its approach because Renicel's approach offers several potential advantages. First is that it has the potential to benefit a wider subset of hemoglobinopathies as it addresses the fundamental issue of abnormal hemo hemoglobin production. If uh, it may apply to individuals with different uh, genetic mutations uh, affecting hemoglobin, and uh, promoting fetal hemoglobin is not uh, gene specific, making it more versatile and applicable to individuals with diverse genetic backgrounds. And AS-Cas12A, the nucleus enzyme used, is known for its precision, potentially reducing unintended edits compared to other methods. Renicel doesn't directly alter the beta globin gene, potentially reducing the risk of unintended consequences. Additionally, increased HBF production could be a lifelong benefit. Recent data from Renicel's clinic trials reported in, uh, clinical trials reported in 2023 paints a very promising picture. Uh, in a trial with 16 sickle cell disease patients, a remarkable 94%, that is 15 out of 16, experienced no VOEs or vasoaccusative events uh, for at least 12 consecutive months, uh, exceeding the primary endpoint. These benefits are expected to be lifelong according to both Vertex and CRISPR. Now, Another trial focused on transmission-dependent beta thalassemia TDT patients uh, with Renicel showed an 89% success rate in achieving transmission independence for at least 12 months 
which was the primary goal. The FDA is expected to make a decision regarding Renicel for TDT treatment by March 30th, 2025. And um, Edita's Edithal uh, trial for TDT patients demonstrated an early and significant rise in total hemoglobin levels in all participants exceeding the threshold for transfusion independence. And these results are not only encouraging, but also suggest Renicel's potential to be a one-time durable treatment offering life-changing benefits for sickle cell disease and TDT patients. Notably, the therapy appears to drive rapid and sustained increases in fetal hemoglobin production, which is a key factor in alleviating SCD symptoms. Although not yet approved, I think the Renicel, that Renicel boasts a long track record uh, for uh, data as compared to CASJV and Lifegenia. This accumulated uh, data could provide greater confidence to the FDA in the approval process. And Renicel targets the gamma globin gene pr promoters aiming to induce HBF production across SCD genotypes. This broader approach, if successful, could be advantageous compared to CASJV's targeted BCL11A editing, uh, which may probably not work in some genotypes. Renicel utilizes uh, AS Cas12A nuclease enzyme known for its precision. While long-term effects require monitoring, the potential for precise targeting with Cas12A is encouraging. Now let us look at the pricing strategy. While pricing details for Renicel are not available, we can speculate uh, based on current market trends and what we know about its competitors as well as its potential advantages. Given its potential superiority, in my opinion, uh, to CASJV in terms of broader applicability to genotypes and a precise editing technology, I think Renesel uh, cost might be somewhere above CASJV's uh, 2.1 million price tag. And to establish itself and compete with uh, compete in the market and carve out a market share, uh, it might price itself uh, strategically lower than Lifegenia's hefty 3.1 million cost. And this could be a way for Renicel to gain market despite being a late entrant. And um, I hope that uh, Renicel doesn't get any black box label. I, there does seem to be no indication as such uh, right now, but if uh, FDA does not give it any black box label, then that will be another point of superiority for Renicel when compared to uh, Bluebird Bio. While FDA is considering Renicel's phase two data as potentially registrational, Official approval is still awaited. Clinical trials will continue to evaluate its efficacy and safety profile. Like any gene therapy, the long-term effects of Renicel requires ongoing monitoring. And if I was to conclude all my thoughts together, I would say that Renicel with its extensive clinical data demonstrating early success in trials, broad, broader applicability and precise editing technology has the potential to be a game changer in sickle cell disease and TDT treatment while cost remains a major hurdle, its pricing might fall between CASJV and Lifegenia, offering a, a potentially more accessible and effective option. However, continued research and official FDA approval are crucial before definitive conclusions can be drawn. This would mean that uh, approval of Renacel may impact Bluebird Bio more than uh, it would impact CRISPR therapeutics. And this could potentially put further strain on Bluebird Bio. So if I look at the share prices of um, CRISPR therapeutics and Bluebird Bio uh, on the advent of um, an approval being given to Renicel, then I would think that CRISPR therapeutics would fare much better uh, because CRISPR therapeutics uh, has got other therapies uh, which are in advanced stage and it has got collaboration with uh, Vertex as well and it uh, has already tied up with all the insurers. It doesn't have a black uh, box label from FDA and it costs $1 million less than uh, Bluebird Bio. So it has got its own uh, natural advantage. Now, when um, uh, Lifegenia uh, is um, taken into consideration, it has the higher price tag and it has got the black box label. And of course, it has tied up with all the insurers uh, to get its uh, market share in place. But if uh, Renicel was to enter the field without a black box label and with the pricing between CASJV and uh, Lifegenia, it will definitely, it's more likely to eat into the share of Bluebird Bio as compared to CASJV uh, from CRISPR Therapeutics. And that's my personal opinion, friends. Uh, this is based on my reading and understanding of the various gene editing and uh, targets and technologies. 
uh, and anybody else who has got greater understanding on this may beg to differ but this is the way I'm looking at it. I would look forward to your comments and feedback. Put it in the comment section so that all of our community can benefit from this. It's better to prepare in advance so that we can uh, anticipate what might, what catalyst might be at play for all these three stocks, Editas, CRISPR, and Bluebird Bio in the advent of approval of uh, Redicel. Being prepared is a very good uh, strategy when it comes to pricing and valuing or timing the market. With that, I would like to bring this video to an end and I look forward to your feedback. I'll catch up with you in the next video.